How you doing, Quest Kids? My name is Mr. Matt. I'm excited to be doing the lesson for this week. Wish I could be there giving you a high five, but I... What are you doing? Wait, uh, I'm trying to record a video for the Quest Kids. What are you doing? Well, I was what? coming. The Quest Why Kids? Oh, hey! Hi, Quest Kids! Why I do miss you, you all. What do you hey, have... I was just coming to tell you that it is National Salad Month and, oh, and National asparagus month oh. because it's may 1st and i know how much you hate vegetables i'm not a big vegetable fan but guess what you're gonna be eating vegetables the whole month of may oh no salad so National wait did you salad. say you're recording this for the kids at church yeah guys don't tell your parents that it's salad month if you don't want to eat vegetables what are you talking about well, we're going to talk about some really cool stuff. Do you want to join us? Yeah, can I? I want to be in this video. Yeah, I've sure. never recorded a video you... for the kids. Can I put this out? Yeah, away? put it away. We can eat this as a snack after we record. Maybe. <laughs> we're so excited to be talking to you about uh, a lesson from God's Word today. I hope you all are doing well. We miss you. We can't wait to see you. Someday in the future, we'll give each other high fives virtually right now. Hope you're doing well. I'm back! Miss Ann is back. So, today we're talking about a really cool part of the Bible. Do you guys remember we celebrated Easter a few weeks ago? And that's where we talked about how Jesus, in that weekend, he, after living a perfect life, he died, he sacrificed his life for us. And then he rose from the dead, the best news ever, the best comeback story, that he rose from the dead to show that he can conquer death and, and, and our sins can be conquered because of what he did for us. Well, 40 days after Jesus rose from the dead, mm -hmm. 40 days afterwards, Jesus then left his disciples. He Where left everyone he on earth. He went up to heaven. Oh, right. He said, see you later to his disciples. And the disciples were like, why are you leaving us, Jesus? We need you. But Jesus said, no, it's your turn to be leaders. Mm -hmm. And that's when the church started. When Jesus left, he, he put the church in the hands of his disciples and the people that were followers of him. And so we're reading today a snapshot of what those people did. This is 2,000 years ago. So after Jesus left, this is how they did church. So Jesus died. He rose from the dead. He was with his disciples. And then he left. And then the church started. And we can read about that in the Bible? Yes, in the book of Acts. The book of Acts. All about the, the church when it was starting after Jesus left. Ooh, can I read? Yes. Here yes. you go. We're going to read. Okay. If you have your Bibles at home, it's in Acts chapter 2. Verses 42 through 47. Okay, so Acts is in the New Testament. New after Testament. the Gospels, after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, then you'll find the book of Acts. The Acts. The Acts of the church. Hmm. Cool. All right, so what verse am I starting at? 42 through Chapter 47. Chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Okay, so this section is called The Fellowship of the Believers. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. What a cool passage, right? You wow. hear all about what God's people were doing. This is right after Jesus That's left. That's really exciting. Yeah. And let's talk about some of the things in verse 42. It talked about what God's people did. It said they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. What do you think that What's means? the apostles' end? teaching? So the apostles were those people who knew and followed Jesus, and they learned from him. And so then after Jesus was gone, the apostles were teaching others who yeah. maybe didn't have the opportunity to meet Jesus. They were teaching others about Jesus and, and God and, and who he was and what his life and death and resurrection meant to them, right? 
Yeah, that's right. And so the apostles, they all lived 2,000 years ago, so we can't hear from them directly. But we do have, in the Bible, we have all their letters and things that they wrote about Jesus. And so we can learn about Jesus and even the Old Testament learn about God more. And that's what God's people did 2,000 years ago. And that's what we're supposed to do. So they were devoted to the to, apostles. Yeah, and for us, that means being devoted are you to dev reading our Bible. Are you devoted to... So, like, if you love a sport or a team or a video game and you just always are following it and and you care a lot about it, is that what it means to be devoted to it? Yeah. And yeah. so we want to feel that way about these teachings mm -hmm. about Jesus. Very yeah, that cool. is very important to us. Mm -hmm. And we would spend time and energy around it. Cool. Okay. And so that's number one is think about reading the Bible. So hopefully each of you have a Bible at home that you can read and you could read the passage we talked about today. We'll talk about another verse later on. What's the second thing? So okay. the were... apostles uh, teaching and to the fellowship. We'll talk about that in a little bit, what it means to, to be an encouragement to one another, to the breaking of bread, uh, which is being together in communion and to prayer. That last thing prayer is something I want to talk about. We, we mentioned that mm -hmm. at Kids Quest a lot, is, is what does it mean to talk to God? And that's what prayer is. Mm -hmm. And so what do you think it means to be devoted to prayer? Does it mean, mm -hmm. let me see, does it mean like praying once a year? No, probably at least twice a year. <laughs> I think it's more than that, Miss Ann. You're being silly. I think being devoted to prayer means talking to God a lot. Like yeah. when we have something we're frustrated about or something we're excited about, we talk mm -hmm. to God about it. Or if there's a friend or family member who needs something, needs help with something, we can ask God for help from to help that person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard to pray, though. Sometimes I don't feel like praying or I don't have the right words to say. Can I still be devoted to prayer if that is happening? I think so. And I think you just want to be honest with God. You don't mm -hmm. have to, you know, present something official to God. Just tell him how you're feeling. If you're in a bad yeah. mood or you're grumpy, just say, God, I'm grumpy today. I've been grumpy a lot lately. Yeah, I think a lot of us have. And we can tell God that. In the Bible, in the, in the book of Psalms, you have all these prayers from God's people, and some of them are actually angry prayers, mm. where people are actually mad at God. Uh, uh, they don't understand why God's not doing something, and that's okay. Yeah. But the important thing is that they, they come to God. They bring their emotions to God. So that means, that's okay. what being devoted to prayer means. So they're devoted to reading the Bible and learning about God, they're devoted to praying, but there's these other things in here. They're devoted to breaking of bread and to fellowship. Yeah, so what does that mean? Yeah, so that's really about how the church gets together. So worshiping together and fellowship. But we aren't getting together right now. I haven't seen any of these kids in way too long. I know. So we can't do some of those things in person. And so that's what we want to talk about is what does it mean to actually be there for one another when we can't really be together? Mm. And so one way I was thinking, and read one of those verses, actually. I think it's verse um, 44 and 45. All the believers were together, but were not together. I know. But we're going to talk about that. And had everything in common. Hmm. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he had need. So they helped each other out, right? So in that situation, mm -hmm. they could be together, and they could actually give money or support for one another. Well, we can't do all those things together today, but what we can do is we can help provide encouragement to one another. Do you know what encouragement means? Well, last week in the adult service, Casey talked about encouragement and, and how there are things we need to feel like it will help us to have hope and it will help us to realize that there's something bigger than maybe the thing that's really hard right now going on and so sometimes we need it and sometimes we can give it depending on what people are struggling with or yeah that's what it means yeah to me. and i think mm -hmm. it's it's really a way to to tell someone and and to inspire someone mm -hmm. to help them be closer to god and just to be um happier right so i think yeah. encouragement can look a lot of different ways sometimes it's through saying something to someone telling them hey you know, thank you for doing that, or I really think you're awesome. Um, sometimes it can be encouraging someone by saying, hey, I think you'll be great at this, or, um, you know, you should try this out. I think you'll be great at eating asparagus and salad all month, every day for breakfast, lunch, and dinner in May. So that's an example of encouragement. Now, I'm not sure if I like that, but that's encouragement. Mm, so okay. we thought is one thing, what can you do at home, right? Mm -hmm. What can you do at home to be an encouragement to other people, other kids at church? 
And so what do we think we could do? What's something they could do? Well, the first thing that we thought of, which I think a lot of you might have thought of and maybe even done is write letters to each other. Uh -huh. But sometimes it's hard to think about what to write. So we wanted to give you a couple of ideas. Did you have a piece of paper? You Let me get a use? piece of paper. I'll be right back. I'll do a little dance. Oh wait, I've been working on my floss. Am I good at it yet? Because I know in the past, you guys have not thought I was good at the floss. Okay. Okay. Glad I interrupted that. So we thought this could be as simple as taking a piece of paper, right? And just folding it twice. So you, and this just makes, then you just have four pieces. Four um, sections. Four sections. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you keep it in one. And, and this can be a note that you write, you know, to someone that a friend at church, it could even be for a family member that you want to encourage. And so mm -hmm. see how there's four boxes here. We thought that you could use to write four things that you like about that person and maybe draw a picture related to it. So you could, for each of them, a different thing that you like about that person. Mm -hmm. Pretty uh, easy, right? Yeah. I also thought on the back, if you wanted to, you could think about a verse. And we're actually going to tell you a Bible verse for this week that you could mm -hmm. use. And you could write a Bible verse on the back. Yes. And then find an envelope, stamps, and send it in the mail. Or just hand it to your brother or sister. Yes. Or your mom or your dad. Yes. That would be a good But you can too. help encourage others. That's what we're talking about. So let me share a verse okay. as we're closing up. Let me share a verse from Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 through 25. Okay. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see the day approaching. So we can't meet together in person, but we can keep encouraging one another through writing letters like this. Mm -hmm. So we want you to do that um, wherever you're at to find a way to encourage someone in our church. Do you want to close us in prayer, Miss Ann? Yes. Because I think we're out of time. We are? I yes. thought when we were doing videos, we could just go forever. No, we can't. Why? Um, because people fall asleep if you make a video too long. Oh, right. The kids will get bored. Yes. Okay. I will pray for us. Okay. okay. Dear God, thank you so much that um, we could gather together watching this video together, God. And I pray that we would be able to remember um, what you've taught us in the Bible and that we could spend some time learning about that. And I pray that we would um, be devoted to praying. And even when we're sad or angry or we don't know what to say, God, we would remember that you listen and you hear us. And, God, I just thank you for all of these kids that are watching this and that even the ones that aren't that um, we love from church. God, I pray that they would know you more and know more about how much you care and love for them. And God, I just thank you um, just for this opportunity to uh, just be together online. And we just lift up everyone in the week ahead to you. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for viewing. We hope you have a great rest of your week. Take care. Bye. Bye. Let's go have some salad. Salad time. Salad time.